All right. Hey, guys, let's go ahead and get started with our next book. Um, it is called The Day Gogo Went to Vote. And this book is written by um, Eleanor uh, Batizat Sizulu. I think it's Batizat. Um, illustrated by Sharon Wilson. And um, this book, um, well, the books that we've read so far have been about the struggle um, and the struggle for equal rights. Um, this book is not about struggle. So that's a relief, right? Um, this book is about the payoff after the struggle, um, after the struggle is won. So this book is a realistic fiction story, and it's set in South Africa. Do any of you know anything about South Africa? Well, South Africa has long history um, of, of black people being deprived of their rights. Um, but in the 1990s, that changed. Okay, so let's find out how it changed. Um, here is The Day That Gogo Went to Vote by Eleanor Batazat Sizulu and illustrated by Sharon Wilson. And there are some very interesting words in this book that um, might be a little difficult to pronounce, so just bear with me, I'll do my very best. Kind of gives us a glossary at the very beginning. So I'm going to kind of zoom into that. You can totally pause right now and read those. Um, but I just put it up there for you so you can check those out. Um, my favorite is the this one right here. It's mm, mm, Ushu. You have to like click when you say it. Mm, Ushu. I guess in some languages they do clicking sounds and this is one of them. So that's really cool. Okay, here we go, let's get started. My Mongo is very, very old. When I ask her how old she is, she says, I'm older than this township. When I was born, there were no cars or airplanes. When I ask her if she is older than Tata Nelson Mandela, she laughs and says, uh, Mandela is a young man compared to me. When I come home from school, my mother and father are still at work, so Gogo takes care of me. Gogo calls me her little tail because I follow her everywhere. She lets me carry her beautiful blue cloth bag in which she keeps her important things. Sometimes she tells me to open it and I find sweets inside. When my front teeth fell out, she put them in the bag. The next morning, she told me to look inside. My teeth had disappeared. Instead, there were two rand coin inside. Um, I took the money and bought a pair of pink earrings. Aww. Her go-go was the tooth fairy there. Because she was born in the olden days, Gogo knows a lot of things that happened long ago. She tells many stories that her, her go-go told her about um, how our ancestors lived before the white people came. She also tells me about the place where our family came from and how we are all related to each other. So who is the narrator in this book? Remember, the narrator is the one who's telling the story. So who's telling the story here? And who is it that she's calling Gogo? We know this is Gogo, but who is Gogo? It's a name for something. So, let's keep going. 
One day, my father and mother came home very excited because all of the main political parties had agreed to the election date for a new government. Father explained that April 26, 1994 would be a special voting day for old people and those who were very sick. Everyone else would vote on April 27th and 28th. Those two days would be holidays and people would not have to go to work. Good, I will vote with the other old people on April 26th, announced Gogo. We were all shocked when Gogo said this because she never goes out of the, out of the yard. The last time Gogo went out, it was a long time ago, even before I started school. It was when my father took her to the pensions office. When they came back, Gogo was very sick and father was very angry. He told mother how they had to stand in a long line uh, for, pe for people from um, a, a long line of people for many hours. And the man at the office had shouted at Gogo. When she heard this story, mother cried. They should not treat our elders like that, she said. After that, Gogo stayed in her room for many days. My heart, were, my heart was sore because mother would not let me go into her room. Gogo cannot tell you any stories because she is very sick, she would say. Gogo is better now, but she never goes out of the yard anymore. She will not even go to church. The priest has to come to our house to pray with her. Aww. So mother says they should not treat our elders like that. What is the author implying about South African society on that page? I want you to share your ideas. But what are they implying about that area where they live? South African society. That is why we were so surprised when Gogo said she wanted to vote. We cannot take you to a vote on April 26th because we will be at work, said Father. Then I will vote with you on the 27th, said Gogo. How will you go to the polling booth, Father asked Gogo. The same way you will go there, replied Gogo. But we are going by bus. We cannot have you traveling on a crowded bus. The buses may even be too full on that day and we may have to walk. Besides, said Mother, there will be long lines of people at the polling stations. You will not be able to stand in lines. In the lines. Mother and Father asked my uncles and aunts to help them try to tell Gogo that she could not go to vote, but Gogo refused to listen. You want me to die not having voted? She asked. Our neighbor, Ma uh, Mumlabo, came to the fence to ask why all the family was gathered at our house. While father and mother were talking to her, I asked Gogo why she wanted to vote so much. I was worried something bad would happen like the time she went to the pensions office. Gogo told me, Thimby, black people in South Africa have fought for many years for the right to vote. This is the first time we have a chance to vote for our own leaders, and it might be the last. This is why I must vote. So m no matter how many miles I have to walk, no matter how long I have to stand in line. That is one determined... Um, Miss Gogo, isn't it? She is going to vote. She doesn't care how long it takes her to get there or how long she has to stand. I like Gogo. Ma Mamlabo told her uncle, Mr. Ramusha, a rich man who owns many shops in the township, about Gogo. Mr. Ramusha sent a message to father saying that he would send his own car and driver to take Gogo to vote. Oh, that's awesome. I asked mother and father if I could come along. At first they said I was too little, but Gogo told them that I must be there to help carry her blue bag. Soon it was time for the elections. 
The night before, we were all so excited we couldn't sleep. Early on the morning of April 27th, we dressed in our best clothes. We were waiting eagerly when Mr. Ramusha, um, his big shiny car stopped in front of our small house. As we helped Gogo to the car, all our neighbors came out onto the street. They were cheering. The driver opened the car door for us. My friends shouted, look at them be in a bins. I pretended not to see him. I looked straight in front. I was going to help Gogo to vote. I had no time to laugh and talk to them. <laughs> she was meaning business with her Gogo, wasn't she? Okay, so um, how does the author convey how significant this story, this this moment is? What are the characters doing, and what did they do to prepare for this moment that let us know? that this is a very significant moment. Here's the next page. There were many people lined up to vote at the polling booth. The crowd had to move to let the car go through. Mr. Ramushu had told the voting people about Gogo, so they were waiting for her. They said she could he should not stand in line. A woman called the presiding um, presiding officer guided a woman called the presiding officer guided us into the voting office. Wow. I love that she didn't have to wait. Gogo showed her identity back uh, no, Gogo showed her identity book to the voting officers. They then pulled Gogo's uh, hands under a machine. I asked them what it was for. It's an ultraviolet machine, explained the presiding officer. It is against the law to vote twice. This machine helps us make sure that each person votes only once. Look at your Gogo's hands through the glass in front. You cannot see anything on her hands. Now, when we put this colorless liquid on Gogo's hands and put them under the machine for a second time, what do you see? Her hands look blue! Why is that? I asked. Because this liquid is invisible ink. You can see it only under the machine. It cannot be washed off and will fade away only after three days. By that time, the election will be over. So if Gogo tries to vote at another polling booth in the next three days, I, um, I said, her hands will show blue under the machine and they will know that she has already voted. So that's how you tell. Well, that's pretty cool how they did that back in the day. I didn't know that. I learned something new. They then gave Gogo a ballot paper to take into the voting booth. I wanted to cry when they told me I could not go with Gogo into the voting booth, but Gogo hugged me and said, Simbi, please hold my, ba my bag for me while I vote. Why can't I go with Gogo, I asked. Because no one should know what she is voting for, the officer said. But I already know who she's voting for, I said. Shh, it's a secret ballot. That means you just, you must not tell anyone, they said. Mother told me to stop asking so many questions. The voting officers laughed and said, I, um, I have to ask questions, so I will be prepared to vote by the time I'm 18 years old. I love how inquisitive she is. She just keeps on asking a zillion questions. I think a lot of us, when we're young, that's the way we are. We ask so many questions because we just want to know. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. All right, so right here. Um, is this method similar to how we vote in our country? What do you notice that might be different or what is similar? Okay. When Gogo came out of the voting booth, she put her ballot paper into a big box with an opening on top, like a money box. Some people with big cameras that flash bright, um, bright lights took pictures of her. Then they took a picture of Gogo and me together. Gogo looked tired, but she smiled and held my hand tightly. 
All the people in the room stood up and clapped for a long time. Mother told me they were clapping for Gogo because she was the oldest voter in our township. Mother and father were crying. I cried too. I don't know why because I was very happy. When we got home in Mr. Ram Ramushu's beautiful car, our yard was full of neighbors and relatives. My Aunt Sophie had cooked magusho, and um, Ma Lambo brought a huge pail of gimmer. While we were eating, some of my uncles argued about who would win the elections. They became quite angry because they had voted for different parties. Be silent, father told them. Let us not worry about that now. The important thing is that we can vote and Gogo has led the way. Everyone began to sing freedom songs and dance. They danced so much, no one remembered to send me to bed. I danced the toyi toyi, which my older cousins, uh, with my older cousins until our feet were sore. When we were too tired to go on, we all sang our national anthem. Nakosi Sikalel e Africa and crawled into our beds. So um, it's normal for people to celebrate when their uh, candidate wins an election, but that's not what happened what's happening here. Why are they celebrating? Because they haven't even gotten the results yet for who won the election, but why were they celebrating before finding out? What was all the dancing for? Okay. The next day, there was a picture of Gogo and me in the newspaper. My cousins read aloud the words above the, the picture. The past and the future, 100 year old voter, Mrs. M. McCoena, accompanied by six-year-old great-granddaughter Thimby. We felt very proud and important. Aw, I love this story. So sweet. The whole township celebrated after the elections. When Mr. Nelson Mandela became president of the country, um, people danced and sang in the streets all day and all night. There were many uh, parties and we all enjoyed ourselves. But for me, the best day was when Gogo went to vote. What do you think about the ending of this story? How does it make you feel? I know for me, it made me feel really, really happy. And my heart was like melting when I found out that um, she was able to vote and I love the fact that she was so, so determined, even though she was old and she was gonna have to wait in line or she thought she would have to wait in line. Um, I just love her perseverance and the fact that she did not give up. And she went and voted because she waited a long, long time, her entire life for that. So cool. All right, you guys, that is the end of our story for today. Make sure you go to Google Classroom and answer the one question assignment. All right. Bye, guys.